a human hand, the wing of a bat, our eye, the 800 lens eye in a fly. Life has evolved incredible variations, sizes, and shapes. Now scientists are discovering that despite the differences, animals are related in totally unexpected ways. That's really remarkable, that a version of the same recipe can build bodies that are so utterly different. In the midst of developing a video game based on evolution, game designer Will Wright is investigating a toolkit of genes critical to how evolution works. It's interesting that something as versatile as a human hand could actually be coming from something as simple as a fin. It's transforming our view of evolution and our understanding of how we came to be. What starts as just a single cell somehow becomes a trillion-celled human being. How did we come by this exquisitely constructed form? Why is your heart on the left and not the right? Why is your thumb different from your little finger? Why is your arm different from your leg? From all the parts in Mother Nature's garage, how did our prized parts come to be? Upright striding skeleton, nimble hands, powerhouse heart muscle, naked skin, clever brain, the latest science is taking us into our family tree as never before, revealing a story that connects us with some of the most unexpected creatures in the animal kingdom. How did so many experiments in bodybuilding over so many millions of years ultimately fit together a body such as ours? Huge question. But we're getting some unexpected help from video game designer Will Wright. He revolutionized the game industry with Sim City and The Sims. Remarkable simulations of cities and the lives of their residents that parallel the real world. Now he and his team are hard at work on a new challenge. One of the most ambitious games ever, simulating the process of evolution. It's called Spore, and in it, a player designs creatures that must compete against predators, mate, obtain better body parts, and if they survive, ultimately become spacefaring voyagers. Replicating evolution's creature making has led Will Wright to develop an interest in how evolution actually makes bodies and changes them. I'd really like to kind of go out and see how nature does it. What are the things that evolution has at its disposal to define a creature, to mix and match the parts, and eventually come up with a unique organism that's gonna go out there and have to live its life and try to reproduce? To find out, Will Wright is going to visit top scientists, exploring the connections between evolution and genetics. Answers first turned up in a bug. You wouldn't think that anything with antennae, wings, six legs, bug eyes, and a taste for decaying fruit could share a resemblance with us. But you would be wrong. Will Wright is at UC Berkeley's Fly Lab. It may be tiny, but the fruit fly is the giant of genetics. No organism has been studied more thoroughly. So what's with all the flies? Well, you know, these are normal flies. These are what we call the wild type. We also have some very interesting mutants that I think you'll find quite compelling. Geneticist Michael Levine is a key figure in a new science called Evo Devo that's found a doorway into evolution by examining how an embryo develops into an animal. Sometimes that process can go very wrong. So, well, that's a huge blow up of a fly head. Okay. 
Do you see anything uh, a little peculiar about it? Yeah, the antenna looks very strange. What's with that? This is a mutant called Antennapedia. So that's a leg on the left side? That's a leg, not just on the left side, but on the right side as well. Both okay. of those are completely, perfectly sculpted legs. They're wired into the brain-like legs. That mutant fly dies in its food because it's trying to walk on its head. So, so it has legs like, where its antenna should be. Absolutely. That's and exactly right. How does that happen? How it happens, the reason why a fly turns into a monster, led Evo Devo scientists to discover something truly remarkable about how genes build bodies. Within every living creature on Earth is a complete set of genes for body making. Genes are short sections of the vast DNA code. But recently, something amazingly simple and fundamental turned up. Among the tens of thousands of genes that make things in the body, there's another kind of gene. A gene that tells other genes what to do. A master switch, organizing the highly complex operation of making a body. Even a fly's. When this mutant came along, I realized 30 years ago, this was the thing to work on. And I knew then those were the genes to get, that those had some very, you know, deep secrets about basic processes of laying out a body plan and controlling embryonic development. This mutation led scientists to the identity of eight master toolkit genes called Hox genes. There are some 14,000 genes that go on to build a fly, but the process starts with the toolkit. These toolkit genes tell other genes where to put the head, the tail, all the limbs, and antennae. A problem in one of these genes during development can transform a creature into a catastrophe. That alteration you see, the transformation of antennae into legs, that's what happens when the normal gene is put in the wrong place. Oh, so it's misplacing that part of the fly body to a different spot. Exactly. Tinker oh. toys. OK, so these are like little building blocks that uh, control different parts of the body. That's exactly right. Tinker toys, building blocks, Lincoln logs. Could the engineering behind a fly really come down to a handful of control genes? A toolbox for building life? And it gets even stranger. For years we thought, all right, great, we're working on this obscure little problem that may solve aspects of how you build a fruit fly. Okay. But what does it have to do with people? Well, it turns out that related genes are present in our very own genomes, and they're important for our development as a fetus. Another discovery. Toolkit genes don't just exist in flies. They're in a huge variety of animals, including humans. That's why there is such similarity in the embryos of a fly, a mouse, an elephant, and a human. Despite how different they'll look as adults. A similar kind of recipe underlies the development of bodies as different as those of sea anemones and humans. I mean, that's really remarkable, that a, a, a version of the same recipe can build bodies that are so utterly different. The finished product may vary. Fins, feathers, or fingers. But like distinctive cars, underneath the paint job, the genetic chassis is the same. It's a new way to look at nature's bodybuilding. As if there's a tool shop inside each of us, using a similar set of genes to make parts and appendages in very different organisms. So these genetic toolkits are like the Legos. And you could make a house out of Legos, or you could make a car out of Legos. You don't need a different type of Lego to make a car. The discovery of a shared genetic toolkit points to a deep kinship between different species. Powerful new evidence for one of Darwin's most important ideas, the descent of all animals from a common ancestor. But it raises a problem that Evo Devo must solve as well. There was every expectation that we humans had the most genes. We had 100,000 genes. We would have genes that a lowly fruit fly or a sea squirt would know nothing about. 
But this is not true. 